Hi, for about as long as I've been writing about uh, model trains and electronics, I've been getting the same question from folks. They'll have a, uh, an LGB or a Bachmann starter set and they get a small power pack or transformer with it. And it works fine for a while, but they frequently overheat or they'll get a bigger engine and it just can't handle uh, the power that's being required of it. And the question that I get is, well, what's the power supply or the power controller that I should buy? And I'm always hesitant to give them a specific answer because I don't keep that close tabs on uh, the vendors of such things, and I know a lot of them are overpriced and underpowered. So what I frequently will say is, well, if you're willing to do a little bit of wiring, not much, you can build your own from off-the-shelf parts. And what I'm doing with this video and the accompanying web page is, is trying to document exactly how you can do that for very little money. The first thing you need is a fixed voltage power supply. And there's a source of those that you may not think of that allows you to get those power supplies for little or no money. And what I'm talking about is computer power supplies. This goes to a Dell laptop. Uh, this is from an old IBM laptop. This is another Dell. Uh, this one's from an AST laptop. And this one here is from a Compaq laptop. And what you can do with these is take a look on the label. On this particular power supply, it says output 20 volts at 3.5 amps. That's pretty good. That's more than enough to run any starter set. As a matter of fact, it's more than enough to run most engines. What you need to do with that, if you're lucky enough to have a plug on the end that would fit into a female receptacle that you might have, you can just plug it in and you're in business. Many times, though, there'll be a strange end on it. Uh, this one I just cut off. This is a, a uh, little rectangular plug that goes into a Dell laptop. But what you need to do then is to cut that off. Let me cut this fresh so I can show you exactly what to do. And the wire that went into the laptop needs to be stripped. So get your wire strippers out. And I'll pull the insulation off of that. And what I'm finding is some braid. That is typically the negative terminal, the minus connection, if you will. And if I twist that braid together, that gives me one wire. And the center wire, in this case it's white, will be the positive. Now make sure you test that. Plug this into 110 volts with your power cord and get a, an inexpensive uh, meter, multimeter. You can get them at Harbor Freight sometimes for free. And test to make sure that the one you think is negative is and the one you think is positive is. Uh, as far as colors are concerned, the negative is, if it's not a braid like this, it's going to be black. It could be green. The positive is usually red, but not always. But once you've identified those, you've got a power supply that you can use as the beginning of your power system for your model train. Now, the next thing you need, I mean, you could take this power supply and connect it right to the track, but your train would be running at full speed all the time. Probably not a good choice. You need some sort of power controller. Now this is an off-the-shelf uh, PWM power controller that's less than $10. It's got four terminals on it and what you might call a volume control. It's a potentiometer that used to vary the speed. Two of those terminals are marked power. One is marked plus and one is marked minus. Make sure when you connect that up uh, to the cord that we were talking about earlier, that the plus goes to the plus and the minus goes to the minus. If you put them in backwards, it may just not work, but in many cases you can damage it. The other two terminals are usually labeled motor, and that's what's going to go to the track. So once you get that hooked up, faster, slower. But there's one thing missing. Here we've got the power control that gives us the speed difference. The other thing that we need is a way to have it go backwards. Most of us like to be able to run our trains in two directions. In order to add direction to your train controller, you need one of these. This is what's called a double pole, double throw toggle switch. And they typically have six terminals. Two in the middle, two on one end, two on the other end. In order to wire that as a reversing switch, you run your power into, let's say, the center two terminals, 
then you connect the diagonal outside terminals. I've got a wire going from this one to this one, another wire going from this one to this one. That's what does the reversing. And then you can run these wires to your track from either end. It doesn't really matter. We've got power in to the middle ones, power out to the ones on the extremes. Then we need to put it into some sort of enclosure. Now this is a really simple box that I made with my laser cutter. I'll take it apart here for a minute. And inside, there's your double pole, double throw switch with the cross from the diagonal uh, terminals. There's your power controller, very similar to the one that I just showed you, a little bit different. There are a lot of different variations. The big difference on this one is the potentiometer is on three long wires so that I can get it up to the top pretty easily. And on this one, I've got it connected to a power supply. It happens to be this one from an old compact laptop. And if I turn the knob clockwise, there we go. I've got speed control. It's always a good idea to bring it down to zero before you reverse. Now we're going in the other direction. You can throw the switch while it's running, but it's not a real good thing for the motor on the train or for that switch. Chances are good you're going to damage the motor before you damage the switch. Now there's one other option for power supplies. If you really want to get a lot of power, you can use this type of power supply. This is an open frame computer power supply. This one is from a company called Marlin P. Jones down in Florida. This is 24 volts at 4.2 amps and it is really well built. It's going to last you a long, long time. I think I paid about $25 for that. And if you get a power supply like this, you can build everything into one cabinet. Here's a box that I picked up at Harbor Freight. This is meant to be a case for a camera. And if I open it up, you'll see inside of it, I have one of these power supplies sitting in the bottom. I have a power controller here uh, attached to the top with some Velcro. Here's the double pole, double throw switch that reverses. This is the back of the potentiometer that's used for speed. And I've added a fuse, and this is uh, explained in detail on my webpage, and a power cord. So the power cord goes out, gets plugged into the wall, and these wires go to your track. Here I've got forward, reverse, and speed. This case, by the way, I think was about $10 on sale at Harbor Freight. Really a very nice case. And this is another case that I found the same day I was at Harbor Freight. This one was on sale for about 6 bucks. This is an ammo box, a plastic ammo box. And I have the same thing inside. This is the power controller, a slightly different version. There's the double pull, double throw switch. And there's the power supply inside. And again, we've got a cord over here that goes into the wall. We've got a hole in the top that goes to our track. I encourage you to look over the details on my webpage at trainelectronics.com. Just look for power controller. And hopefully this will answer some questions about how you can build your own power controller to use with your model trains.